Recording in progress. Hi, I'm Dave Curtis, and I'm going to teach you a little bit today about how to memorize drinks better. If you're a bartender, uh, like a lot of my students when I taught at the American Bartending School here in Tampa, um, they would say to me, Dave, how do you remember so many drinks? And I would teach them the uh, systems that we had in place then in that class, which, were, which involved um, acrostics, which means, uh, like for instance, a B-52 kills bad guys. So Kahlua, Bailey's, and Grand Marnier kill bad guys. And then you would have that drink. Um, then you would, uh, you would do the same thing for many drinks in the same way. So we, we had a certain set number of sentences that, that would allow um, students to associate them personally and vividly in their minds so that they'd be able to recall them later on. And, um, and that actually does work quite well. And you'll see bartenders sometimes, they'll be behind the bar and you'll hear them go, kill bad guys, okay. And then they'll make the drink because they, they've always used the acronym. Now, once you get used to making a drink quickly, using your acronyms like that for a long time, you're not going to need them. But you should retain them somewhere in your mind because if you take a hiatus, uh, like we had for a COVID, a lot of us were laid off for a year, uh, sporadically or throughout. And um, you got to go back to work. And now, hey, wait a minute. What's in that B-52 again? Oh, wait a minute. Is that... Was it uh, killed bad guys? Yeah. So then you have it. If you go over your drinks, I, I'm I'm older. I'm not gonna tell you how old, but I I will tell you this. I learned how to ten bar a long time ago, and I was using uh, memory systems in high school already. And I decided I'd apply them to tending bar, and it really they really do work very well. So. The way you do it is you create some associations between the ingredients. Now, mostly, for the most part, memorization of drinks to this point has been simply lists. Uh, K, B, G, Kahlua, Bailey's, Grand Marnier, Vodka, um, Amaretto, Cream. You know, things like that. You just, you're going through these drinks by just memorizing lists and then trying to remember how much of each goes in there. So let's say that you have a drink. Uh, <clears throat> let me take a look here and see what, what I can pull up real quick. All right. Okay, there's a, there's a tiki drink called the Beachcomber's Rum Barrel. A Beachcomber Rum Barrel there's a dash of Angostura bitters. It's got an ounce of honey syrup, which is a half ounce of honey and a half ounce of water blended together. It's got, it's got an ounce of grapefruit juice. It's got an ounce of lime juice, an ounce of orange juice, an ounce of pineapple juice, one ounce of um, Puerto Rican, light Puerto Rican rum, one ounce of golden Jamaican rum, two ounces of Demerara rum, and um, a teaspoon of falernum, and a teaspoon of pimento dram with six drops of, of grenadine and six drops of Pernod. And that's all shaken up together. And it goes in a rum barrel and it's for two people. And uh, it's a great drink. But, you know, normally people would not know. Oh, wait, wait, whoa. You just like rattle that off. It's because of the way that I memorize. I know specifically you've got that dash of bitters in there. And... Uh, you got the six drops of Pernod and the six drops of uh, grenadine, and you've got the teaspoon of pimento dram, and you've got the teaspoon of falernum, and and then there's the two ounces of the Demerara rum, and uh, one ounce of the golden, and one ounce of the Puerto Rican, and then there's the whole list of ingredients of uh, the juices that are involved that all go there. And I'll show you at the very end of this video how that looks to me in my mind, and why it comes up like that, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to associate your ingredients together so that you have them all, but then you'll also know exactly how much of each one goes with it, you know, within that um, framework. Because what we're doing here, when you're doing a, um, a mnemonic type of memorization project, you're, you're building, you build a scaffold first of the tools of mnemonics. And in the case, let me show you a book here. It is written in um, 
think it was born it was back in the late 70s i want to say uh, it was uh anyway the point is that it's written by Harry Lorraine and Jerry Lucas. Harry Lorraine was a um, stage memonist. He would go up there, do magic tricks, but he, he was a magic um, a magician, but he did memory tricks. He'd memorize every name in the whole audience, you know, on a regular, every time they came in. Uh, and there were like 300 seats. And then there was, Jerry Lucas was a, a pro basketball player, and he, uh, so it's called the memory book, and it's still available online. It's actually the classic guide to improving the memory at work, school, and, and play. The main thing is, though, that it's got some advanced systems, and it also explains very well how the association process works. Um, for instance, let's say there there is this one, I haven't looked at this book in a long time, I picked it up a while back, but I'm going to tell you one thing. Um, all right, so there is a number on this page here, uh, page 105, and it is... Uh, Nine one eight five two seven one nine five two one six three nine zero nine two one one two. All right. Now uh, there, it's right over here. Hold on. See that one right there? And that's the number, and um, I can't see the number now because it's in front of the camera. But it's uh, 9 and why am I able to remember this number 45 years after I read this book? Because I'll never forget it. But the reason I'll never forget it is because it's, a, it's an association that comes with advanced forms of, of mnemonics. And, and that's the main point of what it is I'm saying here. So I don't have a perfect memory, but when I apply my systems, I do. And I can do it anytime I want to. I don't do it all the time because that's kind of senseless. I used to memorize every license plate number that was. Oh, yeah, license plate, license plate. Because I could do it. All these numbers. I stunk at memorizing numbers. Now I'm great at it. And I'm good at memorizing anything else that I want. And I can do it fast and I do it very accurately. But the thing is, it's got to be accurate. And so it may seem a little, it's a little slower to learn it, maybe, to put it in. I can put it in fast and get it all and kind of make lots of mistakes, but then I have to do too many corrections. So I prefer to put it in the right way. So it's a little more work in the beginning, but pays off a lot better later on. Okay, so uh, for this, for what I'm going to talk to you about now, though, is some of the tools that I would do. I'll set up some uh, some specific tools to help me to remember numbers that are fractions. So half an ounce, quarter of an ounce, third of an ounce. Um, one and a half ounces, two, two ounces, two and a half ounces, uh, three quarters of an ounce, one ounce, depending on how the recipe is, is built. So I'm going to switch cameras right now. I'm going to bring you over to my pad, my notepad, and you're able to see, here we go. So we'll start with this dash. And I have a bar spoon over here. I'll use the bar spoon as my pointer. All right. So here you see we have a dash, and the dash can be anything. Like a dash of Angostura or bitters or a dash of whatever. All you need to do for that is you use a, you set up a tool. In your mind, anytime there's a dash involved, you're going to pull out this, these pair of legs, and you're going to attach it to the thing that's a dash. In this case, we have a bottle of Chambord, and there's a dash of Chambord. Normally, you're not going to be using dashes of Chambord, but remember before in the other, uh, in the rum barrel, we were... Um, using six drops of Pernod and six drops of grenadine, and essentially a dash of bitters is about, I would say, what, three, four ounces? Uh, I mean, about six drops popping out all at once. So that's the first portion of how to memorize something using a tool. We're creating these spe specialty tools that you can, you can use quickly. Now, the reason why I developed these 
was because I had a, I had a, I had gotten a hernia a few years ago. All right, and uh, I left my job and went to a new location. Uh, I moved, and the, the jobs that I worked, I, I couldn't work I, every because my hernia was giving me a real problem, and. Uh, I'd be given a menu to remember and a whole bunch of specialty drinks, 10, 15, 16, 17, sometimes uh, specialty drinks and a whole menu. So I'd memorize a whole menu, race through the thing, and, and I'd have a real problem remembering the precise proportions of each one, you know, quickly, all of them. So I developed this system. Now here's a splash. A splash is like a, a mermaid tail. What you do is you keep that. Now that's your splashes, just like the movie Mermaid, Splash with the mermaid. Uh, now you can attach that to anything you want. In this case, I'm attaching it to this um, this lemon. So it's a splash of lemon juice. It could also be sour mix, you know, whichever the drink calls for, you'll know. But let's say you got like four things that are splashes. I have a drink that's got uh, um, three splashes. It's got cranberry, so I made the head out of cranberry. It's got orange juice, so I made this part orange. And then I made the bottom of the tail with thick scales on it. And uh, the fins were like uh, green leaves because it was a pineapple. So it was a splash of uh, a, sp a splash of sour mix. I mean, a splash of cranberry. Ooh, I'm just looking at the yellow. A splash of cranberry, a splash of orange juice, and a splash of pineapple juice. And that goes into that drink. So uh, you don't have to make three def three separate ones. You can just make the colors on there that will represent what they what the splash is. A splash, by the way, if you use one of these pourers, hold on, let me grab an empty one. All right, yeah. So if you're using one of these and you do and you do a splash, it's approximately a half of an ounce. So half an ounce and a splash are approximately equal. In this case, the uh, the juices though, you don't measure them as by counting. You just give it a splash, so it doesn't count as a as a half of an ounce in the recipe. So the next one is the quarter ounce. The quarter ounces, you're gonna, this is a kind of a tricky one. Um, I, I keep trying to show this to my girl. I'm telling her, you know, this is a quarter, it's a quarter, trust me, it's a quarter. So this is a, a quarter of, a, of a, um, a lime or a ball, like a green ball. So when you take away one quarter and then you turn it a little bit sideways, it's like a band shell, like a band shell where they play music. And I like the band shell for the quarter. I tried using a 25 cent piece or even like George Washington to represent the, the guy on the quarter, but it doesn't work as well. This is good because you can put things inside of here. It's quite spacious in your mind. Like here's a drummer, see? And then here's a guitarist and there's a singer. So it's got room for lots of stuff. Now over here, the drummer is Jamaican. So it's it is a quarter of an ounce of Jamaican rum. And this thing over here that looks like a gear, it's a cog. A cog is cognac, C-O-G, and A-C. So it's a quarter of an ounce of cognac, and it's a quarter of an ounce of Jamaican rum. And that's how that would work. The spacious span shell is a quarter of a sphere. And that takes care of that. So if you're able to pull that tool out, you've got already You've got the dash with the legs. You've got the splash with the, uh, the the mermaid tail, and you've got the quarter, which is the band shell. It's a uh, quarter of a sphere. You can put things inside of it, and when you do that in your associations in your mind, you'll find you're able to remember quite a few ingredients that are quarter of an ounce that way. You can put a lot of things in there. Um, here's a thread. Now the thread represents a third. You don't usually get a third of an ounce of anything, but sometimes you'll see a recipe that calls for a third of an ounce. So it's here. And for me, the thread can be animated, see? So you've got legs on it, you've got the spool right there, and he's got he's even got his little uh, needle. And in this case, He's yelling, I'm guard, like a sword uh, fighter. So he can be using that to, to skewer something. Or let's say he's skewering a cherry. Uh, in this case, it would be Peter Hearing. Cherry Hearing or um, any kind of <clears throat> cherry vodka. Whatever it is that you're using that thread to, to represent, 
a portion of uh, for the recipe. All right, so now we get rid of this guy. All right, hold on a second. Pull that away. All right, now, the next one is a half. That's the simplest one of all. The one I like the most, kind of, it's sort of, kind of, I like it a lot. Um, you, you can't use it on, you have to put a separate hatchet on everything, just about. In this case, this hatchet is chopping something in half, so it's a half of an ounce. You always, you think of a hatchet, you split wood with it. So you're basically creating two, port, two parts. In this case, this is either an orange or a peach. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be precisely uh, like, this has to be an orange for this demonstration, or this must be a peach. If it were a peach, I'd add like little, probably like little reddish kind of pink uh, cheeks on it and give it a smile, like a, you know, make it a, a nice, a pretty peach. So we'll use that one as an orange. It chops stuff in half. So you got the, the band shell for the quarter ounce, the thread for the third of an ounce, the, the hatchet, or an axe, for the half ounce, all right. So that's good. We'll take that away. Next one, we got three quarters. A three quarters. This is a great one. I love it. Uh, I have. I originally started using a tree, and the reason why is because you know maple syrup comes out of a tree, and they, they actually drill a little faucet in there, and um, the, the syrup comes out through the faucet. I thought that was like a, a joke when I first saw it when I was young. Um, I, when I was a kid, I said that's a joke. But you can get water out of a cactus that are doing that, and you can get you can get maple syrup out of a tree, but you can also get water out of a tree, a sycamore tree. So tree water, tree quarter, tree quarters. See, and so I'd put stuff in the in the leaves of the tree. I'd put it up in the branches. The tree would be bigger, you know. But that's what I started out doing, and I still use trees frequently. But this is good too because it's a pie shape. And three quarters of it are there, and it's a baby carriage. See, so you can put anything you put in there. In this case, it's a baby with a Russian hat. Now, a Russian hat to me represents uh, vodka, and there's a pineapple. So that's pineapple juice, and you color this in or whatever in your mind. You're doing it in your mind, but you can also take notes and use uh, apps on your phone. Um, I, I don't draw them anymore. I use I use an app on my phone and I do little uh, sketches. Matter of fact, I'll show you a sketch right now. Um, because I got the, because I happen to have this, let me make sure we can pull up a better one, it's more recent, something I haven't messed around with too much. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, here's one. Um, that's Jolly Rancher. See, he's got, see the hatchet in his hand? Jolly Rancher's got a hatchet in his hand and he's chopping into a can of Spam. And the reason why is because Spam is... Sour mix, pineapple juice, apple pucker, and Midori. And it's all a half of an ounce. That's a simple drink. But it is easy to remember. And it's I used to get confused between the uh, Jolly Rancher and the Planter's Punch. Because one's a planter and one's a rancher. And I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. For that. Which one's which? But the, the, the simple truth is, uh, now I don't, I, I don't ever get confused anymore uh, after not making one for a period of time. And uh, it's easy for me to recall. So the three quarters right here, excuse me. <clears throat> so that takes care of your three quarters. Use a baby carriage. Put the wheels on it, do anything you want. Anything in there is three quarters. Now for one recipe, I had to make a uh, make an eggnog. <clears throat> and for that one, it took four eggs. So I thought, hey, this is cool. I made the four wheels eggs. I actually turned them into eggs. Um, all right, that's right here on this since I pulled that up on my phone. Let me try pulling that one up too. Hold on. And it should be simple to do because <clears throat> because I here we go. Hey, here we go. I'll show you what I mean. All right, so here we go. We got this homemade eggnog, and in this in this eggnog, we've got um, there's the tram. Uh, I mean, the baby carriage. It's actually called a pram in in England, and it's got um, heavy cream. You see how it's got three quarters, and it's got a cup handle on there. That means it's three quarters of a cup, and then the nutmeg up on top. That's a thread, a third of a teaspoon of nutmeg and then over on the left <clears throat> there's some other stuff there's the hatchet see the cane with the hatchet in it i'll show you where that is hold on a second and move that closer 
Right, you see the cane? And there's a hatchet in it. Well, the hatchet is a half. And the cane is cane sugar. And believe it or not, that little handle on there is a cup handle. So I know, and this is something I'm going to show you in a minute. The cup handle on anything means it's a cup. So it's a, this is a half a cup of cane sugar. It's uh, three quarters of an ounce of cream, heavy cream. It's a third of an ounce of uh, nutmeg. It's three cups of whole milk. It's a dash of, of uh, what was that down there? Oh yeah, it's, I'm sorry, it's a teaspoon of uh, vanilla for the leg. And that takes care of that. So you got everything going on in there together to make homemade eggnog. And that's how uh, I learned it. So let me go back now too. And all you gotta do is take a look. If you forget it, you just take a look at the picture again. Bang, it's right back. The whole thing's back in your memory. It's not like looking up each ingredient and trying to remember it because it's a story. You're creating a narrative. Effectively, um, let me go back. Let me pull this camera out of here. Go back to me again. All right. What you're doing is you're creating a narrative, a storyline that you're using to remember what's going on there uh, in the picture. Now, normal associations are, are, are hooking and pegging things to each other, this image, and then there's a dog on top of a cat, and then there's a house on top of the dog, and then there's a tree on top of the, the house, and the whole thing, it's just like a big giant chain of stuff, but it doesn't necessarily, you have to make it personal, you have to smell it, you gotta see it, you gotta feel it, you gotta taste it, you know, everything, the, the um, the, the th everything about it, the more you do to remember like that, the better it'll go. But, but there's an Aboriginal system used by um, uh, Australian Aborigines, which is called the narrative method. And, and they'll, they'll use a story at a place, and like a stage, it's just like you have that amphitheater, you know, for the music. They'll, have, they'll go to a rock or, or a, a cliff where, where there's a, a, an unusual, some kind of a, a outcropping, a landmark and they'll go there and then they'll they'll have a story a narrative goes on there as to what happened there or uh, something going on in the thing that they're trying to memorize so they can remember a story because stories are easy to remember and once they do that it works better than anything else uh, it's been found they're using doctors are using these systems all the time um, apothecaries people who are druggists. They're using them all the time. When they go to study um, the pharmaceuticals, they have to use these systems, and so do doctors. And the, the methods are ancient and from prior to the existence of writing. And uh, they're very advanced and they work quite well. So let's go back to the drinks again. I'll go back and explain how this works. One second, right over here. Okay, so we're going back, and the tree can be used for the three quarters. So you got the three quarters for the baby carriage. You've got the half ounce, which is the hatchet. You've got the quarter ounce, which is the, um, the amphitheater. You've got the dash, which is going to be the pair of legs. And then you've got the splash, which is closer to a half of an ounce. That is the mermaid's tail. And so we're going to go back now after this after the tree, after the three quarters, I mean, we'll head over to one. Now, one in the, in Jerry Lucas's and uh, Harry Lorraine's system is a, a tie. It's the tuh sound. Tuh, duh, fuh. And that word association is tie. In this particular case, we're using a very wide tie. It also looks like a tie. Uh, it looks like a one too. It's got a single stroke, up and down. You can put that one right in there. It'll fit. And um, you can put things in there. You can, like for instance, you can put an acronym in there, like GLOP. Or you can put stuff in there, like a pineapple and an orange. And in this case, the pineapple one ounce of pineapple and in this case it's one ounce of pineapple and one ounce of orange juice now what about the glop 
GLOP. Okay, I left, I had in my drawing for the rum barrel, I had an H on the top of the tie, right in that circle. Kind of a big circle, that part that goes up on your neck. H. And it stood for honey syrup. So it's half an ounce of honey and half an ounce of water. I'm sorry, yeah. And then one ounce of grapefruit, one ounce of lime juice, one ounce of orange juice, and one ounce of pineapple juice. So H glop. And I remember H, the H, I use the H symbol, the old H symbol from the New York Hilton, the Hilton symbol, which was a funny H that was in two halves. So I knew that it was half orange, I mean, sorry, half honey and half water. So combined, it's one ounce. So one ounce of honey syrup, one ounce of grapefruit, one ounce of lime juice, one ounce of orange juice, one ounce of pineapple juice, H glop. And that's easy for me to remember because usually when you get a, when you spill something on your tie, you get a big old glop of food on it. And that for me, that's personal. I like to keep, everything should be personal in your mnemonics. Don't use mine, make up your own. In this case, the, the pineapple and the orange, that works. Um, so that's how you remember one ounce. And I skipped over one and a quarter ounces. Ah, I shouldn't have done that, but I did. And for me, I use uh, Dieter. Dieter is a German name, and uh, anything, I put a German hat on it, I remember, hey, that's Dieter, 1.14, so it's one and a quarter. Now, I, I ought to really do that. You can put a, like a German hat on a, uh, a bottle of rum or a bottle of uh, anything you want, and it's one and a quarter. But for the most part, a lot of drinks are using one and a quarter ounces anyway for some sort of a, for one of their uh, ingredients um, in the list of ingredients. All right. So this one is one and a half. And I use that, for that I use a box of total. And this is part of the reason I'm using the word total is because of the memory book, because of Jerry Lucas's book. There's a way to convert numbers into letters. Just the way I remembered that real long number before. Um, 9, zero two one one two the way i remember that is because i used that system so for me the word total means one and a half ounces so this is all you gotta remember is to get a box of cereal get your box get your box of cereal and put things on the cover you know um it's not wheaties but it's, it's it may as well be wheaties because this is oj simpson number 32 oj now i remember oj from back when i was in uh, high school he was playing football so OJ is orange juice. So I know it, one and a half ounces of orange juice. And now here, over here, this is that guy, the Hawaiian Punch dude. Now Hawaiian Punch happens to be a replacement. If you don't have passion fruit juice, you can substitute Hawaiian Punch. Is it as good? No, but it's something that bars will do on occasion. So I remember it's one and a half ounces of orange juice and one and a half ounces of passion fruit juice. Now in this particular case, in the drink that I'm using, I'm making with this, I'm making the, the, the zombie. And uh, so OJ Simpson is wearing a tie. And he's got uh, also, he's got one ounce of dark rum, one ounce of light rum, one ounce of orange curacao. And this dude over here is carrying two drill bits. And that's something we're going to get to in a minute. The drill bits represent bitters. So it's two dashes of Angostura bitters, one ounce of, of uh, dark rum, one ounce of light rum, one ounce of orange curacao, one and a half ounces of orange juice, one and a half ounces of passion fruit juice. And then there's uh, 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 some more ingredients over here where he's throwing a grenade into a, um, a grenade, by the way, stands for grenadine. So he's throwing a grenade into a band shell, which is a quarter ounce. And then over here, he's got a float of 151 rum on top. Uh, um, and, and so that's part of the, uh, the recipe on, on that drink right there. So what we have here now, and it also gets a, uh, a pineapple and a, uh, a sherry garnish. So now over here, the next one we're going to go with. But you see how these are working, right? You see how you combine them together. 
even though he's wearing a tie, he's wearing the tie. The tie is still representing one. So he's got all those ingredients in there. He's got the, in this particular, I'll show you the, the actual, hold on a second. I got that right over here. And, ooh, I don't like that one. That one doesn't look good. Um, yeah, there's, these are very personal. Um, the way you do these, sometimes you'll use objects that are not for public consumption. In this case, I will show you, but I'm going to have to cover up the, what was that damn thing? Oh my. All right, I can't do that one. That one's, it's not going to work right on the, on the camera. That's the problem. All right, so you're going to use your imagination, and some of them, they can be uh, graphic, you know. Um, as long as you use them to remember, that, that's all that counts. All right, so let's take that one off. That's one and a half ounces. Now, the next one, if you have to remember something, there's two ounces of something in there. The simplest one is, is Noah. Noah is always representing two, and he's easy to remember uh, because animals on the, went onto the ark two by two. So Noah is two. Noah can be uh, holding something, drinking something, doing something, um, pointing to something, uh, sitting on something. You can do just a lot. You can do a lot of things with him. You, you can have uh, you can put something in his hair and his beard. Doesn't matter. Um, and whatever that is, it's two ounces. That's it. Pretty much. It's two ounces or two in the case of cups. It could be two cups, but it's two. So. He represents the number two. Uh, the next one over. And I use that a lot. Now, the next one is Noodle. Again, this is a Harry Lorraine and Jerry Lucas book because, memory thing, because Noodle, to me, is two and a half. And there's a reason why, um, because of the sound, n, d, l, that gives me the 2.5, 2.5, which is two and a half. So any kind of noodle will work. I know that looks like I was I, after I did this one. I said, "Well, that looks a little like the cup handle um, that I'm going to use to show you what a what a cup is." So I'm just going to tell you: you can use the squirrely noodles, you can use um, the egg noodles. It doesn't matter, and you can use a bunch of them in a bowl. Doesn't make any difference. You can even use. I guess you could use uh, those those round ones. You know, not not macaroni. All right, so anyway, this is a cup handle. So the cup is anything that has a handle on it. Like, remember I showed you that uh, cane before, earlier on, in the uh, homemade eggnog? Well, that cane had a hatchet sticking at it. So it's a half of a cup of cane sugar. And that's it. Half a cup of cane sugar. Anything that's a cup gets a cup handle on it. And I used that also when I did the uh, the cream, the heavy cream in that drink, um, in the eggnog. The heavy cream had a handle on it, so I knew it was three quarters of a cup and not three quarters of an ounce of heavy cream. Now, here's the drill bit. I told you before, drill bits, anything that's a bit. That's easy. You don't really do much with that. And I had... Uh, I had the guy from Hawaiian Punch holding one in each hand, or actually he had two drills in his hand, so the bit was, you couldn't miss it. So that's two dashes of Angostura bitters. Now, for the glassware, a lot of times you get confused. What kind of glass does it go in? And uh, I'm not quite sure. Well, the glassware is going to be, uh, I based this one, specialty glass spatula. Special spatula, specialty, specialty. It's kind of weird, but anyway, it works. It does work. It works surprisingly well. Um, and then here's a highball, and that's easy. Eyeball. You can put an eyeball in the drink, add it as an ingredient, or have uh, one of the one of the things up in the beginning is going to have an eyeball. So you got that for the highball. Collins glass is a tall glass. It's like a column, like a Roman column or a Greek column. So you can picture a Greek soldier. You can picture a Roman soldier in there. And you're going to know that that 
is Greek, Roman, and you'll think of column, but you could also put columns in there. Just put a column right in the, in the um, recipe somewhere. Now rocks, that's simple, rocky, rocky Balboa. You got a big red, whatever it is, whatever personality is in there, you're gonna use people, you're gonna use actions, you're gonna use objects to remember your recipes. And the last one, this is where you're actually gonna start putting together stuff yourself. If you find that things are hard to remember, um, vanilla is a van, okay? Now, if you can picture a van with a cog on the side, and I showed you that's like a big gear, it's, it's vanilla cognac. If you can picture a, a, a Russian guy driving a van, it's vanilla vodka. If there were some reason, you couldn't do it. Grenade is grenadine, that's simple. And a cross is Jägermeister. Now, Jägermeister, let me show you the, the label of the Jägermeister, in case anybody there doesn't remember what that looks like. Your Jägermeister has got a cross between those antlers, see? And that's real simple. So you're going to be able to just think of that cross anytime you need to use Jägermeister. Uh, for me, uh, we've got that drink called uh, Red-Headed Slut. Now, the Red-Headed Slut has Jägermeister in it. I just picture that she's got a big old bouffant hairdo way up in the air, and it's got a little opening in it, and there's a cross in the middle. So I know that it's got Jägermeister. And then um, her brassiere, she's actually wearing like a bikini. Uh, one half is a big peach. Like, the, you know, the fabric has a print of a peach on it. And then the other, uh, the other one has got uh, cranberries. So you got the three ingredients. And by the way, there is a, a term for that, and it's just pay cash. So right ahead of slot, just pay cash. Jägermeister is the, is the just. Uh, peach is the is the pay and cash is going to be the cranberry and the thing with that one though is that uh, it's three quarters of an ounce of each and uh, that's a shooter so usually shooters uh, they're going to go into rock glass anyway so Rocky is um, giving her uh, 75 cents you know just pay cash so that was one where I before I had devised the um, the baby carriage and I, I was trying to figure out how to do it with quarters so that that was convenient to use at that time so that pretty much wraps up what it is that i was going to cover for the graphics today and let me pull i guess i'll use the integrated webcam no i'll use the regular one all right so that pretty pretty well covers everything that i was i was working with uh to, to show you today you got the memory book jerry lucas i don't get any i don't have any links or anything to this but it's easy to find uh, on the internet and it's not expensive and it will take you through a lot of the things you need. Memorization, active recall and spaced repetition will improve your ability to recall 84% of what you study you will recall. Uh, as opposed to 24% if you don't use any association systems at all. If you're using these active recall systems, you're going to be able to remember a lot more and a lot faster and a lot more thoroughly. And uh, you have to keep it personalized. And you have to give it variety. It's like being a stage manager of a play where you'll You'll replay your memory. You'll, you'll go over it a couple of times, and you'll find that there is something that sticks, something that doesn't work. So you're, as, you're the director. You've got to change that. Change it. Redirect it. Give it something different. Make, it, make the scene more memorable. And by doing that, you're going to find you'll be able to recall a lot better, a lot faster, and you're going to remember a lot more recipes, but not just more recipes, precise ingredient amounts for each recipe. And it will absolutely astound you at how how absolutely certain you are when you're when you're reciting a recipe or making a drink. And thank you. I will talk to you um, the next time. Hold on a second.